everyone. Happy Saturday. A little Saturday tech here. Uh, it's Chase from Cruiser Cult. Today I'll be talking about uh, the 3FE. I'm well versed in this engine since uh, I own FJ62 and I've gone through a lot of this engine dealing with some electrical gremlins. So today I thought I'd talk about some of the main culprits if your engine is not running that well um, or idling funny or has poor throttle response. Um, some of the important sensors you want to look for and um, test. So first and foremost, get your hands on a copy of the factory service manual, electronic, um, or a hard copy. Absolutely wonderful and it really helps you troubleshoot. Um, it gives you specifications for all the resistance values for uh, testing sensors. So first and foremost, um, you know, the 3FE kind of gets a bad rap, uh, but mainly because, you know, it, it's it's pretty old now and it's relying on an electronic EFI system that um, is now, what, 33, 34 years old. So as these are getting older, uh, more quirks are starting to pop up, especially with the wiring and the connectors. And so it's something all of us uh, 3FE owners are really going to have to deal with. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I think the sensor that, gets the mo that causes the most trouble for people is the throttle position sensor here. Um, it usually gets out of adjustment or it goes bad and breaks over time with heat, heat cycles. So it's really good to test that this is adjusted properly. And um, I think to adjust that you'll need a 0.77 millimeter shim and a 1.09 millimeter um, uh, shim. And the ideal way to adjust the throttle position sensor is to take off the throttle body. It's kind of a pain and you, you will have to, you should invest in a new throttle uh, body gasket here for the intake manifold but it's way easier to adjust this when it's on the bench because you have to get the shims on the other side for the set screw. And you have to loosen this just enough to slightly uh, turn this just to the right position. So my advice is take this off the intake manifold and do the bench adjustment for the throttle position sensor. Um, second one that uh, causes trouble and caused me a lot of trouble until I figured it out is the water temp sensor for the EFI system. So uh, that is actually located down here below. So next to the one for the gauge. So quickly, um, you have about five sensors here on the um, thermostat housing here. So this top one here with this connector is for the fuel pressure circuit, uh, the, uh, e the ECU. Uh, detects the coolant temperature and it can adjust the, the fuel pressure based on coolant temperature. This one below it here, the BSBS, uh, is related to the um, the EVAP system for the fuel system, so that's uh, a little more emissions. This one here right at the top is the cold start coolant temp sensor, so that tells the ECU how cold the uh, coolant is and it will tell the, uh, the cold start injector to fire or not. Uh, and then looking right down there, this one with just a little spade connector, that just goes to the uh, uh, water temp sensor on the dash, the, your, your straight gauge. And then the one right next to it, right back in there, is the coolant temp sensor for the EFI system. So that tells the ECU how hot the engine is. And that really dictates how high it's idling the engine and its throttle response. And so when I had that go bad, I had really erratic idle, it would get really high, or sometimes the engine would just die on me in the middle of driving. So it was really sketchy. So um, that's just kind of a rundown of uh, the sensors here on the thermostat housing. And I'll post the part numbers for all of these sensors uh, and actually some of the connectors. You know, as the sensors get old, this plastic also is getting brittle and corroded, and it might be time to replace the connectors as well. And that's actually not too bad of a job. Um, so yeah, definitely if your engine's running weird, sometimes that EFI water temp sensor is a really good one to replace if it tests bad. Again, usually it's a good idea to test all this stuff with the factory service manual before you replace it. Um, and let's see, I think the only one of these sensors that's currently discontinued is this fuel pressure uh, temp sensor here. I'm running an aftermarket one. It's okay. Uh, it would be ideal to find a high quality Japanese replacement. I'm working on it, so hopefully I'll post that part number uh, here soon when I find it. But I was able to find uh, new plastic connectors for some reason. I'll post the part numbers for those as well, which is great. Uh, another culprit with this uh, the aging EFI system here 
is the uh, injector connectors themselves. Those get really brittle. So it's a good idea if you're doing an injector job, getting them re refreshed and resealed is to go ahead and replace the plastic connectors. Um, they get really brittle with age and a lot of them break when you even just try to take them off the injectors. Uh, another area to look at is the airflow meter here. Um, that definitely gets old. This wiring here gets brittle and the um, fine spade connectors in here get old and that can definitely get buggy. Uh, sometimes people open this up. I just resealed this, but sometimes people open this up and try to mess with it um, for some sort of performance or uh, tuning purposes, but you really just don't want to mess with this thing, especially now that it's 34 years old. You're just kind of um, asking for uh, trouble there. Uh, another, and then it's, so it's pretty much most of the sensors for the ECU system. It's really simple, of course, because it, it was so old and such an early EFI system. Uh, the other ones, of course, are the O2 sensors down below the truck. There's two of them, one on each bank. Uh, and those are kind of a pain to replace. If you've never replaced them before, they're likely totally rusted in place. And the only way I was able to get mine out was to actually drop the, um, the downpipes there off the exhaust and just really, uh, have better access to it under the truck it's a huge pain and the connector for i think the second o2 sensor that runs over the tranny hump is a huge pain to get to um, some people have to take off the automatic shifter housing to get to it but um, it's possible to reach over there and, and, and do it with a with just your hand i was able to do that and so um so not related to uh, wacky sensors or airflow meters or fuel injectors uh, is actually the wire loom itself. So Toyota designed for some reason um, the main engine harness here with pretty tight clearance. So it basically comes out from the firewall there, loops around the back side of the engine here, and then you can see it loops around here. And then um, it makes a pretty sharp turn. I don't know if you can see it here, right here, right behind this intake brace. And so it's pinched between this intake brace here and the intake itself. And so that's a pretty harsh bend. And over time with the heat cycles, uh, a lot of people have had issues with the wires melted there, the insulation cracking, um, and then you get some uh, cross signaling with the wires and it really freaks out the ECU and you can get some really weird engine symptoms. So that's another really common problem right there with the engine harness. Uh, I've seen some other people say they've had issues with wires um, where it ent enters the cowl there through the main grommet. So that might be another one to uh, check out on your 3FE. So yeah, those are kind of the main areas to look for. Um, if you have a 3FE that's running weird, um, I would definitely start there first. Hopefully that's helpful. I'll post up some part numbers for some sensors and the connectors themselves. Uh, hopefully everyone has a, has a good Saturday, has some good cruiser projects going. Please share with us whatever you're working on. We'd love to see it. Hope everyone's well. Take care.